Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the third installment of the Cal Athletics Fund Coaches Caravan. We're thrilled to have everyone with us here tonight, and we appreciate that you're spending some time with us as we kick off the long holiday weekend. I'm sure it's a holiday weekend that's going to be different than many of us imagined uh, even a few months ago, but it doesn't diminish our enthusiasm and appreciation for you spending an hour with us today. We know that many of you have been through with us through three of these, that you started off with us when we launched the Reimagine Coaches Caravan uh, for our first iteration, which was Coaching Through Crisis. Several of our head coaches joined us and talked about how they're helping our young people grow through some of the most challenging times. We then shifted into the Pro Bear perspective, where we invited Olympians, professional athletes, and professional coaches who used to wear the blue and gold to talk to us about how they're handling these times and how their experience at Cal as undergraduates has prepared them for it. And of course, we're here today to talk about our innovative program of student athlete development, the Cameron Institute. We've got a big crowd here today. I'm told that we had nearly 200 folks register for the event, uh, and they've done so from 11 states, six different countries, and that alumni from Cal are represented from every decade back to the 1950s. We're appreciative of your time, and we're looking forward to spending the next hour with you. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the Cameron Institute. Our program focused entirely on student athlete development. And one of my favorite things about this program is how it brings together three different corners of the Cal family. First, with prospective student athletes. Our coaches are able to go into any living room around the country, but certainly around the globe, and tell them in great detail how we're going to help their young people grow into the very best versions of themselves, focusing on three different pillars within the Cameron Institute. The second is our student athletes once they arrive in Berkeley that we're gonna help them from the moment they step on campus until they graduate, grow and to develop into somebody that can affect their world as they step away from campus. And finally, as those student athletes move on, we're gonna prepare them to live the best lives that they can. And we're gonna provide opportunities for our alumni, our supporters and our fans to connect back with those student athletes through our jobs program. It's an incredibly exciting time for us. We're thrilled to give you a behind the scenes view of it. And we're gonna tell you about how it was started, how it was created, how it's being rolled out, and certainly what it's gonna do for our student athletes in the future. We're gonna hear from a student athlete and a coach, we're gonna hear from our staff, and we're gonna hear from the man for whom the Institute is named. But first, we're gonna start with our leader. It's my great pleasure to introduce our Director of Athletics, Jim Knoll. Ryan, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the introduction and I am pumped to see this many folks join us to hear us uh, talk about uh, what I consider a transformational student athlete development model uh, that we've been working on for over a year as we prepare uh, to roll this out for our student athletes at the beginning of the year. And uh, as you said, you know, we really have spent a lot of time trying to continue to connect uh, with all of our alums, our fans, our student athletes, and their families. And, and this is just another opportunity for us to talk a little bit about um, one of those innovations that we could not be more proud of uh, because it really is focused on our student athletes and their development while they're here at Cal. And, uh, you know, as, as we talk a lot about, everything we do revolves around our student athlete experience, their developmental experience. And so um, this Cameron Institute is going to absolutely be a game changer and be one of those um, institutions uh, that's a model for all athletic departments throughout the country. And so I, I just could not be more excited as we get closer and closer to launching. And, you know, when I think about the fact that we've spent over a year uh, planning this, uh, it, it just is incredible. And, and uh, you know, we've started out by hiring Dr. Marissa Nichols. And um, when I was challenged, and I'll tell you a little story about uh, Brian Cameron, who this is named after. Uh, but when I started out uh, with the search for who was going to lead this, uh, the one word that kept coming up in everything we talked about is it has to be someone who is exceptional and believes that we can create an institution that's exceptional uh, for our student athletes. And, you know, hiring Dr. Nichols is absolutely all of that and more. And she's building a staff. Uh, that will be truly incredible. And so uh, I'm excited. I'm proud of her. And, and I really am thrilled at the direction 
uh, the institute's going and what we're going to be able to provide our student athletes right out of the gate uh, as we begin this academic year. I really want to uh, spend a little bit of time thanking Brian Cameron and uh, you know his support has made this entire um, really this entire endeavor possible and and uh, you know I, I'll, I'll tell you a little story when I started at Cal I came in and my first week uh, was just one of those banner weeks and by the end of it I had um, one of our teams had won a national championship and so I'd been an AD for over 10 years and never won a national championship and in in our first week my first week as the AD uh, we not only won a national championship um, but uh, we did it in just an, an incredible way. And so uh, when my buddies asked me, well, how is this Cal AD thing? I said, uh, it's amazing. I don't know what else I'm going to do for an encore, but uh, this is amazing. But the day before we won the national championship on a Friday, Brian Cameron had come to my office, sat down and basically said, we must be better on how we develop student athletes while they're at Cal and then beyond. And, uh, you know, it was kind of one of those where afterwards I said, whoa, I, I wasn't sure what I stepped into, but he gave me both barrels and let me know that we got to do better and, and challenged us to come up with a way to do better. And, uh, you know, probably eight months later, we, we came back to him for the final time and pitched what we thought would be uh, the absolute best student athlete development program in the country. And uh, he committed to a major gift. Uh, $12.5 million gift to support this endeavor and support what we're going to do for many, many, many years to come. And so uh, I could not be more thankful and appreciative for what Brian has committed to. And, and uh, Brian has been a huge Cal supporter and fan for many, many years. And, um, and we're just thankful that he continues uh, to put his support uh, in the direction that helps our student athletes. So uh, with that, uh, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce uh, Mr. Brian Cameron, uh, of whom the Cameron Institute is named after. So Brian, thanks so much, and the floor is yours. Well, uh, thank you, Jim, for those kind words. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, those in the audience for your interest in the Cameron Institute and your willingness to help support student athletic development at Cal. A few words about the vision motivation behind the Institute, a few thank yous, and then um, my perception of what it might take to have a successful outcome here. Um, the vision or motivation really starts with my lifetime interest in college athletics, particularly at Cal. In addition, I think this Institute is part of my appreciation for the thousands of student athletes who have represented the university so well on and off the field. Uh, it's long been my observation about college athletes that uh, when done right, um, college athletics can really help develop young people uh, with many skills, work ethic, discipline, teamwork, how to win, how to lose, perseverance, in some cases leadership. Uh, but due to the time and effort uh, spent on the athletic side, my experience is the academic and the preparation for life part of college does not often get as much attention. And so really the Cameron Institute at its core is meant to be an investment in the student athletes at Cal towards their, their preparation for life after college sports. And I think everybody involved in this program uh, believes Cal should be the leader in this area to fulfill its own mission. Uh, a few thank yous, first and foremost, to uh, Jim Knowlton. Um, this was the person from that first time I met him, I knew I could, uh, work with and really trust to put structure and people in place to implement this vision. Uh, Chancellor Carol Christ is fantastic in so many ways, but has been highly supportive of the Institute uh, and really helps with her vision to create an even better student experience at Cal. My very good friend, Mark Stevens, and we've been literally talking and, and, and visualizing this program for over 15 years. So thank you to Mark for all his help and assistance and that continues. Uh, from development, Brian Mann and uh, Matt Horner Camp have been helpful. All the student coaches and all the coaches and student athletes have been extremely uh, appreciative and supportive of the program. And then finally, Dr. Nichols and her team, uh, thank you for all they're doing to 
really build a world-class program here. Uh, just in closing, I think there's three things that this program is going to need to be successful. First is for this, each student athlete to uh, take full advantage of the programs and the opportunities at the Cameron Institute towards building their uh, comprehensive development and preparing them for life. Uh, second, for the friends of Cal Athletics, including all those on the phone today or on the call, to help in terms of their time, talent, and treasure. And then finally, great leadership. And uh, I compliment Cal on an extensive search for just the right leader for this program. And I think we all feel we have just an exceptional leader in Dr. Marissa Nichols. So in summary, I'm just uh, very, very honored and pleased with the launch uh, phase of the program. I look forward to seeing how this investment in our student athletes pays dividends in their lives. That's great, Brian. Thank you so much for for your investment, as you described it, uh, for your words today, and, and for all that you're doing to help us you know, grow young people, which is at the core of what you're doing, and uh, you're gonna help us do that better than we've ever done before at Cal. So we're incredibly grateful for all that you've done. And uh, would ask you to stick around a little bit later. We, we may have some questions for you at the end of this. So, so again, thank you, Brian, for everything. Thank, thank, thank you, Brian, and uh, I'll, I'll be here if there are questions. Great, and speaking of questions, if I could turn to everybody in the audience for just a moment, if you look at the bottom of your screen on Zoom, you'll see there's a Q&A function. If at any point during tonight's presentation you'd like to submit a question, please do so through there. Uh, we anticipate having a few moments at the end of this to take your questions and, and uh, direct them to our panelists uh, right away. So with that, it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Marissa Nichols. You've heard Jim and Brian speak about her and what she's brought to the table already. Uh, a little bit of background on her, she was an All-American softball player at UNLV. Most recently, she was at Boston University, and we're just thrilled to have her here today. So Marissa, welcome. Brian, thanks so much. And hello to everyone. Thrilled to uh, be a part of this virtual caravan. I'm really appreciative of, of both Jim and Brian's remarks. I'm going to be our MC for today, which if anyone has watched my colleague Brian Mann MC before, you know that it's like you're at the Academy Awards. So I have some shoes to fill, but I'm confident that all my Toastmasters training is going to pay off well today. Our goals of this session are to do an inside look of what we've been working on and our forthcoming launch. I'm really pleased to have an incredible panel with us. I wanna share in my role as MC, I will be leading the discussion, asking questions of our panelists today, but given my unique role within the Institute, I'll also be providing some stories, content, and some more supplemental thoughts throughout the session as well. The first panelist I'd love to introduce is Dr. Sean Hendricks. Dr. Sean Hendricks is our Assistant Athletics Director for Leadership and Personal Development. He's also our Chief of Staff, so my right-hand person within the Cameron Institute. He most recently spent 12 years at Rowan University in New Jersey, where he was the Assistant Vice President of Academic Support Programs. And he was also the Director of Academic Transition and Assistant Director of Admissions. He was instrumental in building out their first year class for the entire university, including their student athlete population, and also instrumental in building a leadership academy for their athletic department. He's a former linebacker uh, from Towson University. He'll tell you a little bit about that today. Um, I also would like to introduce our panelists beyond their titles. So these are things that we can look up about them, but something that I'd like to share about Sean also, the panelists don't know that I'm doing this, so hopefully that's okay with everyone. Um, but from my lens, something that you don't see about Sean is um, he's just been incredibly diligent, has an amazing attitude. He makes me better every day, which is why we hired him. And I'm appreciative of how he's really stepped up and stepped in. For example, I've, I've put a lot on his plate in the two months that he's been here. Uh, and he's moving across the country tomorrow, which I'm sure he'll share more about, to be with us here at Cal. And so... We're, we're thrilled to have Sean and, and know he's going to be instrumental in, in all that we're working to build out. The next panelist I'd love to introduce is Terry McKeever. I'm not sure that she needs an introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. She's entering her 29th season at the University of California women's swimming and diving team. She is truly one of the most accomplished and prestigious mentors in the country in her sport and how she develops people. She's won four NCAA, led her team to win four NCAA championships and also four Pac-12 championships, 11 consecutive years in the top three at the NCAA championships, which is pretty amazing and a record also. 
She's a member of the Cal Athletics Hall of Fame. I want to introduce her beyond her titles as well, what you might not know about Terry. So we had the chance to form an advisory board that Brian, Chairman, Brian Cameron will be the chairman of. And I was asked to select a head coach for our first uh, round of service. And Terry was a, among the first that comes to mind, in fact, the first. And the reason why is because I know she's going to hold me and us to world class. And I know she's gonna do it in a very supportive way. For example, a couple months ago, I was in the midst of a really big decision for the Cameron Institute she was a part of and she calls me on the phone one night out of the blue and essentially tells me you've got this i know you have what it takes to make this decision and i support you and that meant a lot to me that was a, a really big moment that i think moved our relationship forward and just goes to show how she holds people at a really high level but she does it with so much care and support so grateful to have terry with us today i'd also love to introduce adam Soleil. Adam is going into his senior year at Cal. He's in the College of Engineering, studying Cognitive Science and Sustainable Design at UC Berkeley. He's a captain of our men's track and field team. His service and involvement spans so many things. It's, it's, it's hard to pull into a few, but I'll share. He's on the Black Student Athlete Committee Advisory Executive Board, our Student Athlete Business Network, our Student Athlete Council for Undergraduate Education. And he's the president of the UAVS at Berkeley, which is a central resource for unmanned aerial vehicle development and flight. Adam, that is well beyond my scope. He also is very active in internships and innovation. Really grateful that we have his perspective on the call today. Beyond the title, I wanna share a story. It's fall, um, student athlete development had just hosted a career connections night with alumni. I get to meet Adam in that session. It's 9.30 at night, he comes up to me, asks me for my vision for the Cameron Institute. I said, Adam, don't you need to go like to sleep or to study or something? And he's, he insisted that we talk about it. So for the next hour, I'm sharing my vision uh, that took about nine years to create. And Adam is taking it all in and then sharing back to me how we can make it even better, what we need to do, and how he's going to connect me across campus to make this all happen. I think that summarizes who Adam is. And it also gives you an insight as to the incredible student athletes that we have here at Cal. Adam, thanks for being with us today too. Before we dive into our first question, we're gonna provide a high level overview of, of our vision, our values, and student athlete development at Cal. So at this time, I'm gonna have Diana queue up our first slide. As you've heard us talk about, we continue to say world-class model, world-class model. That's gonna take uh, it's simply said, but it's, it's not simply done. And so you can see here from the bottom, we have some very clear core values that are going to help us get there. So I want to share how we intend to become a world-class model. Also know that we see this being a, a one-year, two-year, three-year, 10-year project. We have a clear vision of where we're headed in year one, and we're also very clear of where we want to go. And we are so excited to build that out in its entirety. The first way we're gonna be world-class is that we're data-driven. If I asked our audience right now, how would you measure leadership development in a student? How would you measure that communication is improving in a student? How would you measure that a student is becoming more self-aware and uh, has an idea of what strengths they can leverage to land their first golden opportunity? You might say to me, that sounds like it could be challenging to measure. And that's what we love to do and that's what our staff embraces. So we are thrilled that we are going to have clear metrics to be able to showcase what it is we're actually doing to develop our students and show that return on investment to all of our stakeholders, to our students, to our coaches and beyond. We're gonna be very clear on our aspirational outcomes and you're gonna get a preview of that today through the California way. And so everything we do in the Cameron Institute needs to map back to those outcomes that we're using to support our students. We're very systems driven in that Brian Cameron's vision is to serve 850 student athletes. So the way we do that is through a very systematic approach. One example of that is if our students are uh, going through a first year class, which we, we are unfolding this year, and they're 
being assessed on their career skills and interests and inclinations, that assessment needs to then get into the hands of our Athletic Study Center academic advisors so that they can then inform, use those results to help our students make the best and sound decisions that they can. We wanna perform at the highest level we can, and we also wanna build trust. That's through competence, through our relationships, through how we operate as a team, to taking accountability, um, and everything we do, we need to build a trusting system so that, as, as Brian mentioned, it's accessible and available to all of our students. On the next slide, you'll see Cal Athletics vision. The vision of Cal Athletics is to be a model of comprehensive excellence in college athletics. And so essentially, we see this through a three-pronged lens. We know that this is the number one public school, and it's incredible to be at a place like Cal. We know that athletic excellence is the standard here in our department. And now we have this amazing opportunity to package a student athlete development model that's going to support our students now and 40 years down the road. So looking at it through this lens of a three-pronged approach is just another way that Cal is unique. I also wanna take a moment to acknowledge that we've had student athlete development at Cal for many years, back in the 2000s, in fact. And so we've always had someone occupying this role and delivering services to our students. Bobby Thompson has been in this role for four years and worked really hard to provide some amazing experiences for our student athletes. This is our chance to now take this incredible vision of Brian Cameron and be able to deliver in a way that is beyond um, what we've done and, and, and beyond what many in the NCAA are doing as well. To round out this slide before we get into our questions, the next slide will showcase uh, our team as it is to date. And so we'll hear from Dr. Sean Hendricks today. Dr. Greg Chow was hired a month ago as our Director of Sport Performance and Wellbeing. Um, he comes to us from Florida State. He's done incredible work in his field of, of sports psychology and taking evidence and applying it in a really meaningful way to improve mental health, wellness, and performance among students. He's actually also commuting across the country right now to be with us at Cal. I think he just recently texted Sean and I saying he was in Texas. So he couldn't be with us today, but we're so grateful to have him on our team. And we also are in the process of hiring our Director of Career Development. We finish our on-campus interviews next week, which actually means we're gonna be on Zoom all day. But we can't wait to bring that person into our team and know that this team is going to be expansive. This is just phase one of, of our approach and we're so excited to continue hiring and building out our team, especially um, during the current circumstances and given the climate, we're grateful to move forward um, with this wonderful group that we have now. So I'd like to now turn it over to Sean and I'd like to ask Sean, just to, for the audience to get to know him a little bit more, Sean, tell us a bit about how you got involved in this work, why this matters to you. Perfect, thank you, Marissa. And thank you so much for the intro. That was really sweet. I, the feeling is mutual. I, I have been so inspired over these last two months um, working with you and working with Greg and um, Jim, just know that you made the right hire. Marissa has been just truly amazing. Um, so it's just been a really, really great experience. A um, little bit about myself and, and my background. I was a student athlete, so you know that that perspective. That's the lens that I look through. You know, in terms of like my my overarching support for student athletes. I was a student athlete that went through it. I was a football player at Towson University. Um, had an amazing experience, but like so many other student athletes, I went in really unsure about a major, unsure about a career path, um, and really leaned on so many great advisors, um, coaches, teammates. Um, folks in administration to help guide my path. Um, the one thing I'll say that, that really rang true for me was wanting to give back and wanting to work with people in some capacity and, and help them um, uncover their why and really lead them on a path of success. And so uh, this has led to a, a really a 20 year career in education in a number of different capacities. I've coached, uh, I've taught as a professor, I've taught in K through 12. Um, I've served in a number of different capacities in student affairs and um, over the last maybe year or so, I just said, how can I bottle all that, all that information, and, and how can I take that and position myself to work specifically with student athletes? And so um, when the job was posted, uh, Assistant Athletics Director in the Cabinet Institute for Leadership and Personal Development, this was really a no-brainer for me. It was um, really a dream job. I had a chance to connect with Marissa and Jim uh, during my call and learn more about the vision of 
the, the, the vision really of Cal Athletics and the vision of the Cameron Institute. And I was completely inspired. And I thought if I got an opportunity, I'm, you know, this is definitely it. The position that I'm in right now uh, and the work and why I'm so excited about it, it just really aligns with my career aspirations of helping students uh, be successful. And, and um, yeah, now I'm interested to turn it back over to you, Mercer, and learn more about how you got here and, and why you're excited about the work. Thanks, Sean. So as Brian Mann mentioned in the beginning, I had a really incredible experience as a student athlete at UNLV. I actually see one of my former teammates and best friends on the call, Brittany Mead, which is fantastic. And I was able to reach a very high level of performance as an athlete. And I attributed that um, not only to my family support, but also to our coaches who were really invested in developing us as human beings. So that experience was very formative to me. I also had a series of injuries in the middle of my career, so I had to learn who I was away from being an athlete. I was trained as a guidance counselor during that time. I worked in K-12 for a year, enjoyed it, knew something was missing, and always knew I wanted to go back and get my doctorate. When my alma mater called and said they had created a position for me to step into, it was essentially building their version of the Cameron Institute. Um, I did a lot of soul searching to ensure that was the right spot, and uh, I fell in love with the work, I got to study what lights me up the most, which is what goes into being a successful student athlete and really knocking this experience out of the park, pun intended, I guess. And it, it truly turned out to be an incredible and informative experience for me where I take the research and what we know works and the skills and characteristics that go into being a successful student athlete and applying that as a practitioner into our programming. I had a chance to move across the country and build a program from the ground up, build their version of the Cameron Institute, also donor funded, um, had a great and successful experience there, became a little more known nationally for my work. And then as you hear the term dream job, um, it's not used lightly around here. That's exactly what happened here at Cal. Uh, some of you might know the story of how I used to come network at Cal with my resume and um, my portfolio, and there wasn't an opportunity for me at the time. Uh, so when this came to fruition, it came to fruition in a way that I couldn't have ever imagined. I'm so grateful to be in this role. I'm also grateful that Brian Cameron and Jim didn't use the fact that I wore a red blouse underneath a navy blazer on my interview day, thinking I was making a statement. Uh, thankfully, that didn't go against me. That's happened one other time where I've gotten photoshopped for what I was wearing. So I've learned my lesson. All, all of our Cal alum, I want you to know that. I'm clear now. I know what I need to wear as far as colors. I'd like to now give everyone more of an inside look of what's gone on this past year. So Terry, I'd love to turn it over to you now and ask, and, and first say, you've been so involved in our, and supporting us and supporting me in the Cameron Institute build out and just wanted to get your perspective on what's led you to be motivated and um, in terms of, of being a part of everything that we're doing here. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, just happy to, to be here and, and represent the, the coach's perspective. Um, you know, I've been blessed to, to be at Cal for a long time and, and achieve a certain level of success. And, and I really think the, that success is a byproduct of um, trying to develop the whole person. And I, I think, you know, our coaches all want to do that. And there's only so much time in the day and, and um, so much expertise. And the way I see this is now we're going to have true um, professionals and Marissa and Sean and, and Greg to, to support our student athletes to, to be the best versions of themselves. This is um, really, really exciting. Um, I know my team is is really thrilled. It's been amazing to um, to talk to recruits about this, and um, really has set us um, apart as as Cal um, should be in in so many different ways. So this is just another um, another avenue that we can excel and and be exceptional. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. I'm really excited to um, have you serve on our advisory board and all the support you've provided in our search process too. Adam, would love to go to you now and just have you share with the audience about your involvement and what's led to you being so supportive in the build out of the Cameron Institute. Yeah, of course. So um, I think 
you kind of summed it up in the beginning, right? When you were telling the, the kind of origin story of how I initially met you um, was through a networking event, right? Through a professional development de- uh, event that um, was put on by Bobby Thompson. Um, and I think, you know, I've been really lucky to have Bobby as an advocate for me through my professional development um, at, at Cal. And I think at the end of that event, um, I had seen your, your name on the brochure and I had connected some dots and I was like, she's working on a program to, uh, you know, kind of like deepen whatever infrastructure we already have for professional development at Cal and I'm all about that. So um, I think as soon as, as, as you kind of laid out the groundwork for me on the table right there, I fell in love with the process that you were working on. And um, I think that's where I really decided, hey, I want to be involved in this um, to a greater degree. Um, as far as kind of what I've seen so far, uh, I'm really, I'm really a huge advocate of celebrating the, uh, holistic scholar athlete. Um, I think, um, we spend, you know, X amount of hours in a day doing our sport and, you know, three quarters of our day is spent on academics and professional development and career development and networking and that kind of stuff. So I think, really understanding that and beginning to build out a framework and, um, you know, understanding how we can hit milestones and, and encourage other athletes to set these goals for themselves and then celebrate the goals is something that I was really excited about. And uh, I'm really excited to to see how it grows. And, and that's kind of where my head's at with this. I appreciate you sharing that, Adam. I know we're gonna definitely rally around you too to continue to get the word out with your teammates and student athletes and continue to work through our partnership. Absolutely. Sean, I'd like to go to you now and ask for you to give a little insider's perspective from your lens on what it's like building out the Cameron Institute this past two months. Yeah, for sure, thank you. We joke, you know, we joke, Marissa and I joke this week, um, just that, you know, at the beginning of the week, there was one of us in California, and by the end of the week, all three of us will be in California, and so that's where we're at with this. I leave tomorrow morning, and so it's been a whirlwind of, of activity, but, um, and I would say meeting virtually maybe wasn't necessarily the way we drew it up, but it's, um, we are working really hard. We are, we are connecting every day, um, preparing for the fall launch, and so um, I would say a highlight for me over the last two months has just been our working sessions. Um, Marissa, Greg, and I, we meet um, for hours and hours each week. It kind of varies each week, but we, we, we meet sub- for a substantial number of hours each week in these working sessions, um, really learning each other, learning our styles, learning what's important, debating, um, advocating for certain things, um, coming up with ideas, initiatives, and it's really this um, collaborative process that's just been really, truly amazing to see Greg and see Marissa um, and, and their intentions and their vision for this thing. It's just been, um, I would say that that's been the highlight for me over the last two months. And also, I'll just say, share, like connecting with our students, right? So we've, um, I love it, our team calls, you know, we, we always uh, find the time to bring in a few students to highlight. Uh, we've had a few uh, recent sessions with our student athletes and just learning from them and, and getting to, to, to understand their perspective and, and where they're coming from, where they're coming from. It's been, uh, it's been a really great two months on that front as well. Thanks for sharing that, Sean. I know you're well accustomed to our 90 minute working session blocks that uh, we power through multiple times a week. And that's been such an informative process for our work and appreciate you lending some insight on that. For everyone on the call, it is possible to block off 90 minutes. I know it's hard to believe, but we find a way to do it multiple times a week. So for my inside perspective, just to supplement what you've heard, um, it's been a really unique nine months. Um, Three months into the job, I had a concussion um, was healing from that COVID-19 hits, you know, needless to say, like our current racial injustice climate is at the forefront and it's something that we're looking at really hard every day. Um, you heard that our, our new team hasn't even met each other yet. We're building a brand new department for Cal athletics. We're building a brand new program from the ground up. Um, you can't make up the complexity here and what's happening. And all that to say is it's, it's the cow spirit that has been um, something that's been near and dear to me that I've learned so much about too, is that resilience and part of what attracted me to this role. And um, even through that, we're making some really neat progress. I wanna share one quick story. Um, also, 
uh, along the line of, of the coach's perspective here. So I remember my first time walking into a head coach's meeting and being pretty awestruck at, at who was in the room. Um, we have some incredible coaches here at Cal. And uh, I see our coaches as being the gateway to this being possible. And what I mean by that is we have to have their buy-in and support in everything we do. We have to have them advocating and leading the charge so that all of our student athletes um, could take advantage of this, of this model. And so I put our team in a position to um, get into the arena, if you will. And at our head coaches retreat, we uh, launched the very first iteration of the California way, which is coming up here shortly. That's going to ground everything we do. And we asked coaches for feedback. And let me tell you, they're going to give you their feedback. And it is awesome. And it is hard. And we learned so much in that process. And that is what's going to help us be world class. If we can build this out together in such a robust way, if we are looking at the whole Cal student athlete, looking at what our coaches are doing day in and day out to develop our students, looking at what we can do day in and day out to develop our students, that is how we're going to get to where we need to go. Um, so I, I, I'm a big coaches advocate. I know that they're a gateway to helping this be as successful as it can be. All right, I've talked about the California way a little bit, Sean. I'm so excited for us to share more. So, Sean, can you just give us, and I, well, before we go there, actually, the California way is essentially our aspirational outcomes with the Cameron Institute. It is our guiding framework that's going to drive everything we do. We're going to show you a rough iteration that still is being vetted through multiple channels and know that there's a lot that goes into it. You're gonna see a few bullet points, but there's sub bullet points, there's metrics attached to it, there's programs attached to it. We're gonna talk about today. When a student athlete leaves Cal, when Adam leaves Cal, when his peers leave Cal, we want to be able to say with certainty that this is how we developed the Cal student athlete. And so that is essentially what the California way is. It's helping students achieve this great level of success while they're here, but also for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Sean, can you tell the audience and, sure. and, our, and our Cal family, what went into c coming up with the California way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so thank you. So one of the, you know, you heard earlier about our core values being that, that data-driven principle. And so um, really to guide our work, we've used a lot of research and data collection methods. Um, and I just wanna spend a, a brief moment just talking about some of what we've done. So. We have really leaned on our professional organizations and best practices in the field. Um, we've had a chance to really do a deep dive into that Cal Athletic Strategic Action Plan um, and how that, how that looks in real time with this student athlete development concept. Um, we've collected a lot of data from our student athletes through a needs assessment. And so we really had a, a really a good amount of questions on there that, that, that allowed us to, to gain their perspective and, and uh, understand their needs and how they're thinking about these different what we were calling pillars and um, yeah so we, the, the, getting the feedback from the student athletes was also a, a very essential piece and then uh, we also have had a chance to connect with our coaching staff so Marissa um, was well on her way uh, with our coaching staffs and doing a listening tour and there was a script and, and the coaches could go any direction they wanted really with providing feedback about their thoughts about the most ideal student athlete development model and um, just being able to ask questions and um, I, I had a fortunate opportunity when I was first hired to sit in on a few of those and, and learn from, from our coaches. And, and uh, we say like it's one big culture, but each team might have a separate subculture. So learning about those subcultures and, and the needs of each individual coaching staff was really, um, really just a great part of this whole data-driven approach. Awesome, Sean. And at this time, we're going to pull it up on the screen just to give a, a few thoughts around um, where we're at currently with the California way. Perfect. Do you want me to jump in, Marissa? I'll just dive into the perfect. So, so Marissa, <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we rolled out 1.0 to the coaches staff, coaching staffs a few weeks ago and uh, during the head coaches meeting and so much feedback. And so we had to go back to the drawing board. And, and so what, your, what, what, we're, what we have for you here today is really 2.0 as we, as we started to make improvements to the first one um, and, and, and really go through it. So what we're going to do is we're going to share really the second iteration of the California way. Um, the bullets are the outcomes, those aspirational outcomes from this framework. And, and the way that we're looking through, uh, through the, the lens that we're looking through is what is it that we want the student athlete to embody? What is it that we want them to become? And so 
wanted to spend a few moments talking about the first four, and then Marissa will take us home with this one with the last four. And so the first one, uh, the Cal student athlete is, you can, you can see the header there. And, and what um, Brian Cameron on the, on, the, on the call here today, I love that part about setting them up for a lifetime of success. And that is something, certainly something that we are working through. It's not just their time at Cal, it's not just right after they graduate, but really a lifetime of success. And so um, these are some of the, the core principles and those aspirational outcomes. So I'm gonna run through a few uh, and then I'll turn it over to Marissa. So the first one is an authentic leader who is, uh, who is purpose and values driven. This, this first one's really important, obviously for a number of areas, um, but it's that, that concept of knowing their purpose, knowing their core values, and then how they can apply those uh, principles in all aspects of their life. Uh, the next one is team oriented and makes unique contributions to achieve collective goals. So when we think about this, we think about the concepts of coachable, um, understanding their role, um, making sure that they're accountable, um, and they're making these contributions to their team and to their to to um, to different areas. And when we think about team, um, we don't just think about their team on in their sports field, right? And, and we think about team, and it could be a number of different capacities. It could be in in an internship. It could be in the classroom. Um, so we think about that that concept of school, sport, and life. And so that next one there, multidimensional and excels in school, sport, and life. That's Greg, our colleague, he, he really drove this one home this week. And, and, this, and Adam, you had touched on this idea of this holistic approach. And this is what we're thinking a lot here with um, this idea of, um, Greg used this analogy this week, um, the softball and baseball analogy for one that's like a five-tool player and, and meaning student athletes that, you know, you're balancing as a student athlete multiple competing priorities and what that might look like and being able to um, be successful through that. Um, and then the last one I'll touch on is this idea of committed to excellence and, and, and has a high performance mindset. And so the concepts of um, resilience, um, concepts of, of growth mindset, being able to learn from failures, all of that is playing into how we're thinking about that aspirational outcome. I'll turn it over to Marissa for the next four. So the last four outcomes that, that we're launching are this uh, being well connected to a strong and robust network of alumni spanning multiple generations. I see so many of, of our alumni in this category on the call. That makes me so happy. You're going to be a tremendous part of what we do. In fact, you already are in so many ways, and we just have the chance to systemize it. And, and, and we're going to talk about more about what that program looks like in the next few moments. Um, we want our students to be positioned to land their first golden opportunity and have uh, give them the ability to flourish in their chosen career. This is certainly an incredible tenant and outcome for us. From the moment they arrive on campus, they're exploring opportunities um, so that they have a range of experiences that allow them to make the most informed choices and not only land a great first opportunity, but position them to be set up um, for many years to come. We wanna help immerse them even further. Our student athletes are immersed in campus. In fact, a lot of these things are already happening, but this is our commitment to ensure that they are through the metrics, through measuring the success, through the programs we'll offer. We're gonna provide opportunities to really drive that home and help our students um, connect across the campus in the community um, to help craft that overall identity and connect them to all the resources that are available. We have a system for that as well. And then grateful to be at the number one public institution and for their time as a golden bear. We want our student athletes to say time and again, they would choose to do this over and over again. When we say grateful, we mean that regardless of the experience, there's highs and lows, how can we cultivate gratitude in our practice, which is something that we'll embed into some of our programming and models. And so if we, if we talk more about Sean, what this, we can go ahead and take this slide down and Diana, thanks for your support here on the back end. Sean, tell the audience now, let's bring this to life. So they see our aspirational outcomes, but what does that actually look like tangibly for this coming year in terms of programs and support? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. And, and I think that's, that's the key question, right? So these are the aspirational outcomes. And then what do those look like in practice? And so um, we're looking at a number of different uh, interventions where we can introduce and implement. And so we're looking at uh, orientation as a really great spot to introduce ourselves, introduce the California way. What does this look like? What are those, um, those key metrics that, and, and how do we get that information to um, students and parents? Um, we're also, we've been working very closely with the Athletic Study Center. Um, to enhance our first year course. So this was something that Marissa um, touched on a little bit earlier, um, but you can see all of these embedded in a first year course makes so much sense for us because we can, we can get them engaged in a number of different capacities. It's built into their schedule already. It just makes so much sense to do it 
um, in a classroom setting for so much of that California way and so many of those um, those outcomes you can see being infused in, in a first year course where we set them up for a foundation of success. So they start thinking about their core values. They start thinking about their leadership styles. Um, they start thinking about what it means to be a good teammate and, and, and how, what does resiliency look like in my life? And so that first year course is really gonna be a home to so many of our great ideas and building a foundation. Um, we also see a, a leadership series um, for the fall semester. This is something that we're, we're incredibly excited about uh, to launch is uh, how do we, how do we capitalize on the, on the leaders within the Cameron Institute, but then also how do we bring in um, folks from the athletic department? Um, how do we bring in campus community um, partners to, um, to engage our student athletes and, and build upon um, those core concepts um, in, in, the, in the California way? And I'll turn it over to Marissa. I know you wanted to touch on how, what this looks like in practice. Yeah, so you heard it from Sean. Um, we're rolling out in enhancing the first year class where we want 100% of our first year students to be uh, enrolled in that class for credit. Um, thanks to a great partnership with the ASC to really hit, drive home a lot of these outcomes. We're building a leadership series. It's a stepwise process where our students can be involved in these multiple levels of leadership development. Uh, Another really big initiative that we're going to actually pull up a poll question here for a moment is is our alumni engagement and community engagement platform. So we're building that as we speak. And so for all of our wonderful um, alumni and community members on the call, you're going to have a chance to come into our system and share exactly how you'd like to give back from a mentorship side from an internship or job opportunity um, to more technical skills, resume, uh, LinkedIn development. And our goal is to have 850 student athletes embedded into that platform in year one. Um, it's launching at the end of August. We could use your, your help with a name here. So go ahead and give us a vote on your favorite uh, name that you see for the alumni platform. Uh, we get to have our own website with this too. So do you like the Cal Family Network, Cal Connected, Cal Bears Connect, the Golden Network? Perhaps there's one that you don't see that you like and you can share that with us too. I'm wondering as that comes up, Marissa, I'm wondering, Adam, what do you think? Do you have a preference there? If we're just talking about like brand identity, I'm really liking Golden Network. It's sounding <laughs> okay. good to me. Yeah. Okay. All right, good stuff. I love it. So as those results are pouring in, I also wanna share, we collected data on what our seniors are doing after graduation for the first time this year. We're getting ready to roll out that report. And we also have a baseline information of how many students engage in internships. And so one of our major goals too through this platform is to increase the number of internship opportunities and job opportunities that our students have available to them. Um, but not only that, just being able to tap into this incredible network um, of, of individuals that can um, work with our students in a mentorship capacity. We'll go ahead and share those results. It looks like Oh, wow. So the Cal Bears Connect and the Golden Network seem to be among uh, the top here, which is, is great to see. So we, we appreciate the feedback and we will certainly keep that in mind. Uh, we are also working through our website build out and we got a question that came in on how we're going to leverage all the services. So we see, and this is what we heard on the listening tour, Cal is such an extensive, robust community that We've been compiling all the different experts on campus, all the different resources, community members, and our plan is to build that out through this website platform so at any moment we have access and our students know what's available to them. On that note, the vision of the Cameron Institute five, 10 years down the road is that every student has an individualized, customized developmental plan. Um, that's that's based on data, that's based on what their needs are, and that's where we also are going to draw on this resource base that we're building to leverage that support. So we want this to be a comprehensive home for our students um, where we'll house our curriculum and we'll also house all of the different resources available. I want to also um, just share that in Greg's role, he's working on the build out of different workshops and opportunities for our teams um, to provide the mental skills training what the great thing about that is so much of the mental skills training that our student athletes will have the benefit of, of um, being a part of is all, are also the very key things that lead to landing that first golden opportunity or that first great job when they leave. And so we're thrilled to have Greg being able to work with our coaches and help support them and also our student athletes as well through those workshop one-to-one -one group sessions. 
Adam, I'd love to just get a, a thought or two on, on how you see, what, based on what we've shared pragmatically, um, the aspirational outcomes, any thoughts or reflections around these, uh, these items? Yeah, so I think um, what really stands out to me, just as someone who would be using this framework, is um, the Cameron Institute is really dynamic. Uh, I think everyone is, everyone's path is going to be different. Um, one of the things I wanted to touch on is um, one of the bullets is talking about in the, in the California way. One of the bullets is talking about um, how can we have student athletes uh, situate themselves into a career path that they're excited for. Um, but I think just the step before that, that um, is kind of implicit in the whole Cameron Institute um, strategy is we you got to find out what you want to pursue first so um i think that's that's absolutely fantastic supporting the student athlete um in this, this in this career path that they decide on but i think there's a backbone to that that's really uh kind of something really poignant to understand is we're going to be holding the student athlete's hand through understanding these other opportunities that are available on campus um i can say just like anecdotally um my freshman year, I was able to explore a lot of the different club opportunities through like Calapalooza and Cal Day and that kind of thing. Um, and I, and I, I got, you know, flyer bombed on Sproul. Um, and that's something, uh, you know, a lot of students go through, but not always execute on. So I think um, offering a framework saying, hey, we laid out all of these opportunities on the Cameron Institute site. Now you can go here and pick and choose and see a description or however it's laid out. And really decide on, hey, maybe this is a path I want to go down, or maybe I want to experiment with with this certain thing that, that I didn't catch during Cal Day or Cal Palooza or whatever. So I think that's something important. Um, and I think that's something I'm really excited about is just exposure of these opportunities um, and, and, and that kind of thing. I appreciate those thoughts, Adam. And you, you brought up a great point going going back to our systems mentality in the Cameron Institute, one of those systems is in that first year class, this was one of Brian Cameron's um, maybe only asked to me. Um, he's wonderful in that he he's really trusts and, and gives us a lot of autonomy, but we're assessing every first year student on those career interests and strengths and then getting those results into the hands of the Athletic Study Center academic advisors so that they can then help our students make the most informed choices um, on different paths and, and what's, what's um, possible given some of their unique strengths and inclinations. But pairing that with exactly what you said of all the different experiences and opportunities um, that will house and offer for our students. I know we're coming up on a time here. Terry, are there any closing thoughts from your end um, that you wanted to share that maybe we didn't address or, or things that you're thinking through? Um, it's just been my experience that um, you have some student athletes like Adam that are that take that own their own initiative and and venture out and, and find the different opportunities. Um, but I think there's just as many that don't really know where to look. And, and that's what's gonna be so valuable is there's, there's gonna be a framework of where to look <laughs> and, and where to get information. And you, know, you talked about like the career aspirations or tendencies getting in the ASC, ASC's hands like to me, it's like you, we get it in our student athletes hands is just as valuable and get them starting to think about, um, you know, not just what is my interest, but maybe what are my skills, um, you know, my, my tools and my strengths, how do they fit in with what my interests are and do I need to develop new strengths or, um, you know, or is there something of an interest that are, I've never even thought about before. So I'm just... I'm really excited for the structure and the, um, the development, the layering of being able to take that first class and, and then just build, um, it, it would, you know, it's like your, your athletic skills, you, you have those foundational ones and, and if we can get their foundational ones set right when they get into Cal, they're going to be in such a better position as they not only beyond Cal, but as they navigate Cal as well. So um, just really excited. And every time I listen to all of you and it, it just gets me even more excited. And, and what I will say is just how you're building it out. You're listening to all the different um, constituencies. So it's not just your vision from over here, this is what I think we have, but you're listening to the student athletes, you're listening to the coaches and, 
And um, I think that's how we're gonna get um, the, the buy-in. So it's, it's pretty, pretty exciting time. <laughs> Terry, thank you for sharing that. I really, really appreciate your thoughts as always. I, given the time, I'm gonna, we're gonna go back to the audience here and as, as, before we wrap up. And one of the questions that came in was, how can Cal alumni best get involved and support the Institute and the student athletes? And that is a wonderful question. Uh, where is your greatest need for support from the alums and friends of Cal? And are there opportunities to volunteer as mentors? Yes, you are positioning us for our next um, link that will go in the chat, which is collecting more information on you so that we can plug you into our, our alumni engagement platform and, and the different opportunities. Um, to answer that question, you know, we had a, a um, one of our candidates for the career director role say, I looked up the Cal alumni and I, I didn't know who to choose, like to reference. There's so many amazing people out there. So we want to build and, and really formalize this robust community that we know exists, that we know is out there. We have alumni that already do great things with our programs. Um, I know Nancy Arrear has done a lot of work with our women's basketball program already, and we're thinking about how we can centralize these efforts. And so we're gonna make a big call to action in August where we ask you to join this platform, um, maybe the Golden Network, potentially is, is what we're calling it. And it will prompt you to share how you can give back to our students in different areas and how you're, what, what kind of support you'd like to provide. And so we're gonna leave it up to our alumni and community partners to share exactly with us what that looks like for you. Is it one-on-one -on -one mentorship? Is it coffee with a student athlete? Is it a job opportunity you wanna offer? We've vetted many platforms and we have selected what we believe will be the best to achieve all of our goals. And um, we look forward to bringing you into that and then our students can interact with you directly and we can start building those mentorship relationships. Sean, did I miss anything? I don't think so. I think that's perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to get a check from maybe Brian, um, how we're doing on time. Um, I don't want to run too much over. I know we're coming up to the end. And Brian, I think Marissa's giving you a run as the, for the top MC in the uh, <laughs> athletics department here tonight. <laughs> I don't think there's any competition. I think it's over. I think I had a great <laughs> run, but uh, <laughs> my time has come and gone. Uh, and so that that's great. We we are coming up at the end here. So I'll, I'll just wrap us up quickly and and just reiterate some of Marissa's points. We had some incredible questions coming through from the audience today about how student athletes can get involved, about the metrics that are used. Certainly a lot more for us to discuss as we build this out. And I think the lesson that I've learned is that there's an appetite to learn more. So we'll certainly be sharing information broadly with everybody. We'll bring Marissa and Sean back and certainly Adam and Terry as they continue to be involved in this moving forward. Most importantly, I'd ask you to keep your eye out for an email for us. We're gonna give you the opportunity to become involved. Many of you have asked about making a gift in support of the program. Brian Cameron obviously got us off to an incredibly generous start, uh, but for us to build this program out the way that we want to, we're gonna need more help. And so if you're able and interested to make a gift, there'll be an email coming as a thank you. There'll be a link in there for you to make a gift to the program and we hope you'll consider doing so. In that email as well will be a way for you to get more involved. Marissa outlined it very well. There's a link in the chat right now. We'll put that link again in the email so that if you decide you'd like to become more involved in the Cameron Institute and help our student athletes find the very best versions of themselves, we'll provide you that opportunity as well. Lastly, I just want to remind everybody that we have one more coaches caravan coming up in a few weeks. And on July 16th, again at 4.30 p.m., we're going to celebrate 150 years of women at Cal by focusing on Cal athletics during that time. I don't want to give it away, I guess, but we're going to have a special guest from campus that we'll announce beforehand. And we hope that each one of you will join us again for the final in a four-part series of the Coach's Caravan. So thank you so much to Adam, to Coach McKeever, to Sean, and to Marissa. We're incredibly grateful for your time, for what you're doing, certainly for all the hard work you're putting into the Cameron Institute to build that out. Thank you again to Brian Cameron for joining us, for Jim Knowlton for your remarks, and to each one of you for joining us. So thank you again for your time. Enjoy the long weekend and the 4th of July. Stay safe and go Bears. Thanks, everyone. Go Bears.